Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of Project Tranmere. In this episode, we begin Season 3 with the Rovers. It's been a slow and steady approach. Of course, it would have been even more slow and steady had we elected to actually play the games. Regardless, though, it's taken us a little bit to get here, and perhaps it's felt like a bit more of a slog, at least to me, just because we haven't made that progress. We've still finished towards the bottom half of the table in the past two seasons, but maybe, just maybe, this is the season where we start to see some of that progress. I'm not saying we're going to fight for promotion, but somewhere in the mid-table, maybe towards the higher half, any amount of progress really would be tremendous. Now, as far as the team is concerned, nothing is really set in stone. A lot of players will be going out on loan. Of course, we have the ability to recall them if need be. The Youth Academy as well is still looking quite good. Quite well, quite good indeed, though. Of course, there is a debate over whether or not guys like Anton Grasso or Joachim Bergstrom are worth using. Not every player is going to be a Timo Alton, and by the time we get him to develop. But overall, Youth Academy is still looking good. We'll continue to scout out. Of course, right now we have scouts in Ireland, Japan, and the Czech Republic. We'll continue to get through the list of suggested nations that you guys have sent out as well. It is more of the same in the interim until we start finding that success. So let's get into this, shall we? As to begin the training here, I think I am going to focus on Moritz Meyer just to try and make him a just absolutely dominant force. As mentioned, I believe Declan Clark is going out on loan and Dragosevich will more than likely be our starting keeper this season. If he struggles, we can easily bring back Clark, but we'll train up Dragosevich in the meantime. And from there, tough call. Josh Wilson, though, still looking like our best overall defender, and he very much is. It's tough to really know who the hell to build up from here. You know, let's, uh... Again, because we don't really know who's leaving out on loan right now. Let's let's stay let's stay focused on Meyer. I was gonna say we could hold off until we see who ends up leaving the team. Let's just focus on the main two players for the season. And once everyone goes out on loan and we really see what this roster is looking like, we'll figure it out from there. We'll make him better at set pieces, I suppose. Ah, free kick accuracy. Why not? I don't believe we have a go-to free kick taker on the roster thus far. So let's move forward. We'll get our first scouting report, I believe, on the 10th from, again, Ireland. as Ireland, Japan, and the Czech Republic, I do believe. I will, uh, you know, no, I won't spoil it for you where we're going next. But I do have to pick the third nation, but there was a little bit of extra support for the other two. As this is going to take a while to load, just because, again, the ridiculous amount of players that we have going out on loan. I think we're going to have a couple of guys coming back as well. I'm intrigued to see what the roster ends up looking like. Yep, nine plus messages. This should be interesting. <laughs> just off of the first day, there's going to be so much to change about this roster. And if this takes any longer, I'm going to make a jump cut. All right, we jump cut it. Preseason tournament, what are we doing? We jump cut it? Would that be the right way to phrase it? Doesn't really matter. Let's go to Germany for this preseason tournament, try to get the most amount of money that we possibly can. And taking a look here, yeah, we we let a lot of players go. <laughs> Which again, I might end up regretting, but holy hell, that many, huh? Damn. Well, let's let's take a look at what the roster looks like now, shall we? And especially in terms of reserves at the moment. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. We can make that work. We can make this work. We'll probably change up the formation. Indeed, Dragosevich will be the main goalkeeper. We're actually going to have to sign another goalkeeper out of the Youth Academy, which works for me. Now, I should bring this up at some point, so why not bring it up now? As uh, Let's go see who we can bring in here from the Academy. As far as regens go, I talked about that at the beginning of the series. Of course, for, if you're not familiar with FIFA, if a player retires, there ends up being a regenerated version of him on the free agent list. So if Messi retires, you can sign his regen. He'll end up turning into a beast. I said at the beginning of the series, I didn't really want to rely on anybody like that, as we're going to sign Abolovsky here. I didn't want to rely on regens, but 
if we continue to struggle to make it out of League 2, that might not be the worst idea. And then there was also the thought of whether or not we want to, uh, you know, scout a future star, which is another option in the game through the catalog system, where you can pretty much find, again, for those who aren't familiar, you can pretty much find a guaranteed superstar because of it. That's also another option that we could explore if we continue to struggle. Like I said, though, I have a little bit of hope, a little bit of optimism as we begin this third season. That said, of course, Dragon Savage has a loan offer. You know what? I'm not against it. If I can send him out on loan, too, we'll sign another goalkeeper. Because Lord knows we had quite a few keepers in the Youth Academy already. So what I'm going to do, actually, here, just I'm going to sim through these first two games. I'll see you guys on the 10th when we get our scouting report back, and we'll take it from there. But I just want to put that idea out there as far as scouting a future star and signing regens. Still not something I necessarily want to do right now. I don't think we need it just yet, but that is certainly our, you know, that's our, that's our get out of jail free card. Is that the way I want to phrase it as well? It's not, but it could be a lifesaver. Those, the, those two factors could be the water wings that save the day and get us back to shore. I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes. All right, we're back. Hopefully I can find some sort of a groove here because boy, don't I feel off my game today. But on the flip side, Tranmere Rovers on their game. Two wins thus far in the tournament. Now I did go ahead and recall some players. You'll see Clark back in goal, Sip up front. Had to, had to do that. We needed to make sure that our roster was good to go. Still looking to loan out quite a few players, particularly those under a 60 overall. So we'll see what happens on that front. But before we get to our next game, in case in point, actually, we just ended up loaning out Dragosevich and Sanchez. So I'll be intrigued to see what the roster's looking like now. But we have some scouting reports to get to. So Dragosevich loaned out to Al Halal. Al Halal. I mean, Saudi Arabian League. That's all I know. So he's gone, and then Horatio Sanchez, I actually want to double check to see how good he is. I'm pretty sure he was low 60s, I think. It's not going to be the worst uh, loss in the world, I would imagine. Oh, why is, okay, his name's Horatio, why is it sorted by first? Yeah, he's a 60 overall, so I'm good with letting him go out on loan. That's fine, hopefully he gets some starting time at Cordoba. I doubt it, but... You never know. So that's the type of player that I'm okay with letting go at this point in time. And we still have one keeper signed. Max Wilson, I don't I don't care about your request, fellas. We still have one of the keepers signed. I might have to sign one other. Makoto Ito. He's 63 to an 87, huh? I think we're going to hold off there. Yoda Mitsuya and Aichi Miyoshi. That's, that's not going to happen. The other two, I'm not completely sold on. I'm actually going to... Uh, oh, shit. It's the, You know what? I'm not, I'm not sold on them. It's our last report in Japan. I think we're going to uh, we're gonna reject those final two. In Ireland, Joseph Gallagher, Liam Kelly will definitely be signed. Brian Cassidy, not so much. So we had one more player from Ireland and from the Czech Republic. Cermak, absolutely not. Rebar, absolutely not. Picorni, no. And Jesus, Conrad Medved. Yes. Yes. Please. And six foot. Hopefully, hopefully you're a left back, but we'll we'll see. We do have to get rid of somebody. And this will be the right time to probably bring in another keeper. We have a lot of keepers signed already, though. It's kind of an issue. So Dolazal is there. We're not sure how good he is at this point. There's also Tafari Afrani who could be brought in. He's the only other one. Is there someone who is a super high overall? That's probably what I should have been looking for. 56 in Alton. And... Yeah. Yeah, we're going to sign Alton in here. And we're also going to look to bring in Afrani. We'll handle it that way. Now, there was the case of the Staunton brothers, which you can just kind of tell it's not really going to work out. We're also going to let go of them. So I was hoping that story would work out. It did not, unfortunately. So we'll bring in Medved. We have a couple of other new additions as well. And we need to handle some of the expiring contracts at the end of the year. It's mainly our two big players that we're going to have to look to bring in. So let's go ahead and sort out all of this before we get into simming another decent amount 
of uh, games here. So we have Abelovsky and we have Afrani. We'll probably probably set both of them to go out on loan as well. And we'll just see how many half-decent players we can get signed here and see who starts to take that step forward. Altonen, we'll try to get him as many games as possible. But we do want to run with the best squad possible uh, for as long as we can. I'm not sure how much second team time they'll be. So yeah, case in point, we have a lot of keepers signed. And needless to say, at some point, some people will have to go. So we'll see how that works out for us. But in the meantime, we have to focus on Wilson and Meyer. So Wilson was making 580 bucks. That's not going to happen for that much longer. Let's see if we can sort this out and get him signed. A Canadian international, because why wouldn't he be at a 67 overall? Squad roll, I mean, important. If he wants crucial, we can give him that. And that's not going to work. He does want crucial. Okay, well, at least he didn't get pissed off and walk out of the room. So that is fine. Let's see if we can get a five-year deal out of this. Probably not. Two-year deal. Okay, so we'll counter. We'll get the three. That's good enough for me. Of course, the next time we'll have to hand out a contract is going to be way too expensive for us if we're not at the League 2. Doesn't want a release clause which is fine, please offer me, yes, because I wasn't sure what the hell to offer him. We will accept that. Josh Wilson is back for another three seasons, but now we get to worry about trying to sign Moritz Meyer, which I am very, very concerned about, I think for obvious reasons. If these negotiations go south, this sets us back in a big time way. Of course, he wants the crucial role, which is fine. One year deal. Yikes. We're only going to be able to get him back for two more seasons. That is worrisome. Disregard a release clause, and we'll sign him to what he wants. But yeah, we need to make progress. We need to start making some money so that we can actually afford to keep somebody like Moritz Meyer. Because otherwise, yeah, we're going to be. We're going to be in a little bit of trouble. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to set Alton in to be available on loan. We'll see what happens on that front. Abelovsky's loan listed. Afrani, might as well loan list you two, to be honest. <laughs> we're going to have to figure out, actually, in fairness, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to block office for Afrani. And Abelovsky, it's a tough call. <laughs> it is a tough call. As far as who should be, you know what? I'm going to set both of them to be loan listed. So we're going to have to figure out the goalkeeping situation soon. I know. And we're going to have to call some guys, like to sell some guys. And we can do that in due time. Before I leave you for the moment, and by leave you, I mean sim forward, we need to, yeah, we need to assign our new scouts. Ain't easy for me to say. I'm just, I am on my game. Now, with our main scout here, we are going to treat this in a somewhat serious fashion. We are going to South America, and we are going to be scouting out Argentina for the next three months. Mr. Ewan Cooper, on the other hand, will be going to the fine, fine nation of Morocco by popular demand, and Andrew Ennis will be going to the lovely, lovely nation of Greece. So there you go. Those are our next three locations in terms of scouting. With that, we're pretty much set up and good to go. I will see you guys soon. So as you can see, we're kind of screwed in relation to our upcoming cup match as we draw West Brom. So that's great. It's good to know that we're not going to get any extra time for some of our younger players as we're going to be bounced from a tournament early. So we'll try to loan out Patrick Cox to Cheltenham and we'll see how that goes. Don't worry, I'll delete the emails at the end of the season. Okay, some people gave me shtick over that. At the end of the season, I had so many goddamn emails. <laughs> So many emails from failed loan offers. I just got tired of deleting them. And people are like, man, you heathen not keeping that box up to date. How dare you? And I'm sorry, I learned my lesson as Cox indeed doesn't go to Cheltenham. Case in point about uh, broken down offers. Well, let's go ahead and get to these scouting updates first. Hello, Lissandro Cordoba. 6'3", 
Can't help but think he's going to be a center back. That is promising. Uh, auto adjust budget. Yeah, we'll do that. Thank you. Uh, Jesus, what is going on? Again, though, another keeper. Adalberto Quiroga? Would it be Quiroga? Quiroga. Quiroga. Adalberto. Welcome. I get Jesus, Adalberto Luna. This, why didn't we go to Argentina? Jesus Christ, why did we not go to Argentina sooner? Oh my goodness. Well, that is promising. Highest of, wow, Luna's already a 60. Okay. And Conrad Nedved, who we scouted out before, is a 61. Sweet. So we're going to sign Luna, and we're going to sign Nedved just to make room here. We got to sign Gelano. I would hope I'm close on that front. We'll go ahead and sign him. We still have the two other reports. Ewan Cooper in Morocco. Belghazi. Ilyas Belghazi will not be signed. Jamal Hashini will be signed for obvious reasons. Abdel Kader Hashini. No. And Idris Yassin will absolutely be signed. This is a problem. Talk about scouting future stars. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry about it. Thomas Bosco is not looking that great. You know, as Dolezal is going to be the one that's cut here, I might have to start getting rid of guys like Bergstrom. We might have to raise the bar. We might need 90, you know, 88 plus potentials maximum to keep these guys at this point. We might have to do it. We've already reached that point. Here we go. The real main event of this episode. We only have two players. Aristides Kostopoulos. No. And Anastasios Pietrus, also a no. So, we'll ditch those two. But, yeah, just in terms of the pure quality, like, we've already reached the point, and we reached it much sooner than I thought we would have, where we've filled out the roster, the team's looking good, we have that depth, now we just need to start aiming high, I guess, with who we have here. So, what we're going to do, Luna's going to go straight to the bench. He's going to replace Clark, because I want Altonen on the bench. So Clark will take a seat, and Kovac is good enough to play center back. Is he not? Nah, he's only 5'10". I don't like shorter shorter options in the middle. So we'll have Nedved there, who, in fairness, is he a natural? He's a natural lefty, right? He is. Jesus, by the way, low high work rates. This guy's a monster. So unfortunately for Weber... Yeah, Weber, three, hey, he's a lefty. We'll leave it as is for the moment. But, yeah, the team's, the team's looking pretty good. We actually played our first couple of league matches as well and didn't do all that poorly. Drew Gillingham and beat Northampton 2-1. to one. Now, of course, we have some matches coming up that I'm a little bit nervous for and anxious for. We'll see how we do. But we need to run the best squad possible here against West Brom to try and make it as far into this tournament as we possibly can. So let's see what we can do. They're running five at the back. Can we break them down? Hal Robson Kanu up top. Let's see what we can do. Three, two, one. Morgan got the opening goal. Never mind. We're going to watch this. Morgan gets the opening goal. 24th minute. Half time. Come on. We can win this. We can win this. This would be one hell of an upset. I figured, all right, Carabao Cup, we're done. Morgan gets a second goal. We're 10 minutes away from bouncing West Brom. Are you kidding me? Abelovsky picks up an injury. Luna and Alton and get, I believe, their debuts. That's a 2-0 victory for Tranmere. Holy hell. Did not see that coming. That's probably the biggest win that we've had in our three seasons here. Abelovsky is only out for seven days. That's not too bad. But a blockbuster victory for us. That's really the only way I can think to label it. Now, whether or not we end up dropping this game on the weekend against Grimsby, time will tell. I certainly hope not, but that was one hell of a win. So I am going to change out the majority of this lineup, probably. Actually, maybe not. Fitness-wise, we're doing a little bit better than I would have thought. I'm going to have to make lineup changes. I'll see you guys shortly, and we'll be back with another update. All right, so I was going to do a little bit of Youth Academy management. Figured I might as well join it back in process. Uh, yeah, we're going to be very aggressive and very, very picky with the high level of talent 
that we're going to bring onto this team. So, Anton Grasso, I still think you'd be a decent player for us. I'm going to drop you. Joachim Bergstrom, I'm going to drop you. Zaki Hijaz, I'm going to drop you. Bosco, don't think it's going to work out, buddy. You're gone, too. Cordoba gets to stay. Absolutely, as does Quiroga, who, again, or Quiroga, I don't know. Damn it. It's, who knows? Damn it. Uh, Bolslav Medved can stay. Tadius, you're gone for obvious reasons. Wush, you're gone. Jesus. I don't know how to say your first name either, apparently, Mr. Gallagher. You're gone, too. Akita can stay for the moment. Akita can stay for the moment. There might still be a chance there. Ashini can stay for now until we find out for sure. Brandon Richardson, I think he might be half decent. Again, we're going to be very selective. Galliano can stay. Liam Kelly is gone. Is that it? And then there was Yassine, which I got to admit, Yassine, not listed as a promising player under training. He's gone, too. He's the reason why we showed up. So then there were six in the Youth Academy at the moment. I wanted to reconvene now because this might be the last time we see this. Tranmere Rovers, second place in the league. Ten points through four games, but not only that. We beat West Brom in the Carabao Cup. We then beat Aston Villa in the Carabao Cup 2-0. Things are looking very good for us. And thankfully, I made the smart decision to recall some players. I like how the team is shaping up right now. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to make some changes here for this league match. I think really, though, actually, from the looks of it, I'm just going to limit it to making Alton in a starter for this game. We'll have Kelly on the bench. Our bench itself still looking okay. The reserves still looking okay. I like the look of this roster. And actually, let's bring in Luna and Abelovsky for sip, and we'll see what we can do. This could be... A very special season for us. And actually, you know what? I noticed Clark. Not exactly on full fitness. Big decision. I recalled Jackson, who is our second highest rated keeper. So that way, if we have to rely on the second team, especially too now that we're advancing in the Carabao Cup, check a trade trophy will be coming up, the FA Cup. We might need to rely on a second team quite consistently. Having another strong option and goal could be just what we need. As Morgan scores two minutes in, let's go ahead and skip the rest of this. 3-2-1, it ends up being a one-all draw, 86-minute goal for Miller. Kind of ruins that, but considering we beat Villa midweek, and then we went ahead and won that game, I'm feeling pretty good. Now, admittedly, I am still trying to train up some of the bench players as opposed to some of the other higher-ups. Again, just to make sure we have that decent second team, uh, but nothing too crazy. I wanted to maybe train up some of these guys in case we don't end up losing them here at the deadline, which we have an offer, and that's Patrick Cox not going out to Lincoln. So I think what we're going to do is because this is going to take forever, I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes, and we'll figure it out as Timo Werner goes to PSG for $105 million. Jesus. Transfer deadline day has come and gone. To quickly recap what's happened since, uh, we won Manager of the Month in the opening month. I do want to take a look at the Youth Academy to see some of these updated potentials. And Alberto, Alberto, you're gone for obvious reasons. Medved, we're going to drop as well. Akita, we're going to drop. Hassini, we're going to drop. And Galliano will stay but, yeah, again, we're going to continue to be quite ruthless here, and Cordoba is the only, for sure, safe player. Now, unfortunately, in our last game, we did just lose to MK Dons. 5-4 on penalties, so we've been bounced from the Check a Trade trophy. Uh, that competition, the Carabao Cup, against Watford. You know, West Brom, Aston Villa, and Watford were getting a very favorable, favorable draw. Thanks, game. Uh, so we'll see how we do, and then of course we'll still have the FA Cup coming up, but it is a shame that we have been bounced from a competition already. We were basically running our top squad, and heading into this matchup, we'll be able to get Kelly back in. That was the only change, that we were relying on Altonen being in the lineup at that time. 
as we're going to have... Oh, we're actually going to drop Luna from the lineup. Let's make these quick changes. And then, of course, Wilson won't be in. How are we looking for Medved here? Six foot, five ten. And Manolich. You know what? Manolich. Congratulations. You get an opportunity. And we'll see how the squad can do. Of course, we have a scouting report coming up after this game, I believe. I don't think there was anything else coming up after this match against Port Vale. So we'll see how it goes. They're not exactly in the best run of form. Hopefully we can get back to our winning ways here, despite Wilson being out on international duty. Myers scores three minutes in. Let's sim the rest of this. 3-2-1-4-0. Including a penalty by Sip in the 89th minute to cap it off. So there we go. We struggled to score goals last year. We also gave up a ton of goals. We're looking good. Still in second place right now. Two points back of... Oh, God. If I say Rochdale, someone's going to say it's Rochdale. If I say Rochdale, someone's going to say it's Rochdale. It's Rochdale. 99% sure. But just in case I'm wrong, you can't rip me apart, because at least I knew it was one or the other. And then people are just going to be like, actually, it's Rochdale? And I'll be like, well, shit, I didn't know. In case you haven't learned, sometimes I get names of people and places wrong. So we get a loan offer for Liam Clark, who's a 60. Let's be good with loaning him out. He's one of those players where it's uh, it's looking okay. Now, as I mentioned, not only with the youth, uh, with the youth academy, we are going to have to be a little bit more ruthless here with who stays and who goes, especially too. As do we not have scouting reports? There we go. Especially too, as you know, players continue to improve. I really need to see some major improvement among players that have been loaned out. We'll see how that goes. Before we get to this next match, let's take a look here. Oh my God, Argentina is a gold mine. Ramon Carvajal will be brought in for obvious reasons. Jose Duarte, not so much. Marcio Gallardo, absolutely. And Benjamin Girado, I'm sorry to tell you, sir, but you have not made the cut. Ewan Cooper in Morocco. Issam Bahari. Or Bahari. Ba Bahari. No, you're gone. Thank you. Uh, Murad Tahir, absolutely not. Issam Belghazi, absolutely not. And Samar Misawi, absolutely not. So, to those of you who have been suggesting Morocco, so far, not so good. But Greece is uh, looking a little bit better. Alexiou Lampros, absolutely. And Igoros Pietras, absolutely not. So we got a couple of new additions into the Youth Academy. We are going to go one more month ahead to get the final scouting reports from those three locations. That way, too, I can, again, give you guys a look at where we could potentially scout next. Will we still be in second place in the league table in one month's time? I don't know, but we're about to find out. We have another big game on the horizon. Despite dealing with a couple of injuries early on this season, it is the Watford game coming up. We've put forward our best lineup possible, and we'll see how it goes. After losing to MK Dons, we crushed Port Vale, beat Stevenage, but lost to Macclesfield Town after playing Wimbledon in the mid week so it kind of sucked that our second team couldn't get the job done we needed to make sure our starters were good to go for this game against Watford we have pulled out two miracle victories in this competition thus far I'm not expecting much I think Watford's a step too far up although Moritz Myers scores two minutes in so you never know Jerome Sinclair's up top for them, though. Eddie and Capoo's in the lineup as Sema scores. Well, I'm sorry for not mentioning you, sir. How dare I? I was going to say, they still have some strong players. Eklund scores. There's no way. There is no way we're going to pull off three upsets. Sip goes down to injury. We're five minutes out. Tread Mirrors have beaten West Brom, Aston Villa, and Watford in the Carabao Cup. How the hell? Now, the big question is, how long is Sip out for? Because he's a major player. Three days. Okay, I'll take it. A massive, absolutely massive victory for us. That is insane. If someone would please get Sam Cox off of my roster. Jesus Christ. The amount of rejected loan moves. It's out of control as we get a loan offer for a Franny from Grimsby, which would be nice again. One of our numerous goalkeepers that we're going to have to decide on as the 
Uh, you know, the series continues. So we still find ourselves in second. It's a big game coming up against Accrington. I think the starting lineup will remain the same outside of taking Sip out of the starting role, and we'll play Alton. And aside from that, we're good to go. We'll actually sit Eklund. And you know what? Here, we'll put Davies on the bench as well. We'll give Sip the game off. So we'll see how that goes. Could play Jackson, but we'll keep the majority of our ideal starting 11 in the lineup for this game against Accrington. They are currently in fourth. So this could be a very tough game. They did just lose to Grimsby, though, so we might have a chance. Let's see what we can do. Sip's a major player for us. How can we get on? 3-2-1, 1-0 victory. That's what we can do. Kelly gets moved into more of an attacking role, and it works out for us. So there we go. Still in second in the league table. At least a little bit of separation between ourselves and Wimbledon, Cheltenham as well. As we'll look here, let's continue to boost up some of our role players before going back. Pretty much here's the plan, right? I'm going to boost up some of our role players, at least make them usable if we have to rely on a second team. And then I'm going to go back to focusing on the starting 11 and making them that much better. But considering we're winning games to start the season, it's not as necessary to mainly focus on the starting 11 at least in my opinion let me know if you disagree obviously the better they are the more likely we are to have success but as long as we're going to be finding success in these cup matches which somehow we are we are going to need that second team to play some league matches here and there so i'd like them to at least be somewhat competent as we yet again are a manager of the month two for two Cox ends up being loaned out. He's going to China. Manilich will not be on the move. And as far as our youth academy goes, Carvajal will be dropped. Cordoba is staying. Uh, Galliano will be dropped as well, unfortunately. Gallardo stays and Lampros stays. So not too bad. The one downside about Gallardo is only a 50. At least Lampros has a four overall point advantage but those three will be staying in the meantime. Again, Argentina has been very, very kind to us thus far. As I guess we'll just stay live here up until our final bit of scouting reports. Um, I did reject an offer for Alton, and so don't think we want him leaving on loan. Patrick Cox wants to play, and Patty, I hate to tell you, buddy, that's not going to happen. We're going to be running with the main team, at least as much as we can of course, Morgan, one of the guys out due to injury. So I'm not really too concerned about player happiness right now. I'm more concerned about my happiness and seeing us continue to win games as we need to make a couple of changes. Clark will sit and hmm, that's fine. Bump sip over and we'll go with that. Luna will be in and we're looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Jackson actually went up to a 72 without any training, which is pretty solid. So we will continue onward. We'll see what we can do here in this next league match against Mansfield. Hopefully we can pick up the victory. Good old Mansfield town. Can Clark get the job done? Another five in the back formation. Can we overcome it? Let's find out. Three. Kelly scores in the 11th minute. And then gets a yellow card five minutes later. Three, two, one. There we go. Their goalkeeper actually picked up an injury. Park gets the insurance goal in the 88th minute. Two nil final. And that will not cap off an amazing episode for us. But that will put us in the first place. We, I think we still have at least one more game to go. But we currently find ourselves top of the league table. Oh my god. <laughs> I, again, at the beginning of this episode, I talked about, you know, potentially having a little bit of optimism as we can actually go back now to making Declan Clark a little bit better. Let's try to get him up to a 75. I talked about having a little bit of optimism and hoping that this team could find success this season. Would season three be the year that we finally start to put it together? Don't look now. It's October 4th. We're on top of the league table, even if just by one point. The problem is we have a long way to go. There's a loan offer from Abelovsky, another Chinese club. We'll see if we can loan him out. We'll sim this game 
against Rochdale, which is going to be a problem. Also just known as The Dale, which is great. Uh, we'll see here how this goes. Wilson, international duty again. Canada, you're killing me with this mid-season international duty. You are absolutely killing me. Who would I prefer to play a center back? Medved's fine, even if it's uh, not totally ideal. And we'll have Manilich get a little bit of playing time as well. So there we go. Looking good. Keep the first team together. Outside of Wilson being gone on international duty, this is a big game. How good are we? They're on a pretty poor run of form right now, but they are still in second place. This is the match where we prove ourselves and showcase that we are indeed good enough to be at the top of the table, or it's where we get our reality check and find out that we might not be as good as we think we are, and that we still need to put the work in to get the job done. Two goals for SIP. Maybe, just maybe, we are as good as we look. Henderson brings them back to within one. We're able to hold on. 2-1 victory secures our spot at the top of the league table. What a run. What an episode. This is 12 matches down in the league, and we are top of the table. Again, we still have a long, long way to go. 46-game season, only 12 games in, but it's looking pretty damn good it's looking pretty damn good as we get a loan offer for brandon davies hopefully that is accepted and we have our final reports from greece morocco and argentina so here we go argentina's up first eligio velasquez 6-4 goalkeeper we'll sign him up for now eugenio galliano holy hell argentina is the place to be we'll sign him up benito prado hate to tell you not gonna happen it Emigdio Castenda? What is what is your name? Octavio Hurtado. Great name. Not going to sign you. And Isidoro Paz. Yeah. Definitely signing him for obvious reasons. So again, Argentina was amazing for us. Morocco, we finally find someone. It's a 6-1 goalkeeper, Salim Boudouani. Neat. We'll sign him up for the moment. Jamal al Basir will not be brought in. Abu Belghazi will sign him up for the moment. I doubt he stays long-term. And then Abdelkader Belghazi will drop him. And our final report from Greece, we get Is Isaakios Matasena. No. And we also get Thanos. Unfortunately, he's not that good. So Greece didn't exactly work out for us. So that brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you guys did enjoy. The big choice here, though is where we scout next. Again, left-hand side, all the nations that we can scout out. I'm keeping a list of every nation that we've scouted and nations that have been mentioned thus far. So if I see a nation mentioned again, put a little check mark next to them, know that they're being mentioned more often. On the short list right now, though, Uruguay, Portugal, Switzerland, Egypt, France, Peru, South Africa, Cameroon, New Zealand, Slovakia, Russia, and Norway. Of course, there are other, uh, other nations that we haven't gone to yet, and plenty of nations that we have scouted out thus far. We'll see where we go next. That is completely up to you guys. Let me know. Also, let me know your thoughts on regens and a potential future star. Maybe we save future star as a, as a goal in case we get promoted, something like that as a reward for doing well. But as it stands right now, early stages of our third season, we are currently in first place. Top of the table where we belong. Like I said, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Excited to see your feedback down below. For those of you who are enjoying this episode, I don't plan on this series going anywhere anytime soon. You know the deal, though. Support the video. Support the channel, the series, the description, the whole shebang. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Sip, September, Player of the Month. What a man.